Do you want to introduce computational thinking and early coding concepts to your students? Then the Indie is for you. What makes Indie so special is that it enables screenless coding. This means there isn't a need for a device such as an iPad or iPhone, and it's also great for teachers who are just dabbling in coding. This is ideal in an early years or specialised education setting. With that in mind, let's jump into our first activity. I would start by having the class or group of students around me on the floor. You want to model this to avoid incidents of it falling from desks or tables once the students explore independently. You also want to make sure you have enough room for Indy to run about one metre in length ahead of you, as this is how far it will go once placed on the green tile. I would introduce Indy by stating that it's a new addition to our classroom and that we need to demonstrate our school values and expectations. You could then explain the learning intention and success criteria for the lesson. Show them the power button and ask them not to press it whilst it's handed around to each student. Like see, think, wonder to get students thinking about the robot in front of them. It's also a great opportunity to weave in other syllabus outcomes, making sure to point out any features using the correct terminology that may not have been brought up by the group during this observation. You could even add to a word wall to collate these words and further develop your students' vocabulary. I would then introduce my students to the coloured tiles and ask them to think about what the purpose of the coloured tiles might be. Depending on the suggestions, I might use a think aloud strategy to demonstrate critical and creative thinking. I would then put the students in pairs or triads to test the green tile and experiment with what happens if you face Indy a different way, if Indy runs into an object, or if you pick up Indy mid-run. We would then discuss this as a class, determining best practice when using Indy. Then I would ask what they think the other coloured tiles might do. Pass them out and ask students to experiment and be ready to report back to the group as to what they discovered. I really like to encourage students to learn by exploring and this might be similar for you, especially if you are in a play-based learning setting and being guided by the early years learning framework. This is often when you start to discover which students might already demonstrate an aptitude for coding or working scientifically. It also enables you as a teacher to demonstrate and observe the problem solving and communication skills of your students. After sharing back to the group what each tile caused the Indy to do, I would begin using the appropriate terminology. For example, the input was Indy sensing the colour and the output was Indy carrying out that movement. You have coded an algorithm which is a set of steps or decisions that the Indy is now following. And at this point in the lesson, you could also weave in math syllabus outcomes around position as this fits in really nicely here. Following on, you could introduce the challenge cards and ask students to move through them to refine their understanding of how Indy works and further develop their computational thinking skills. If this type of activity does not suit your context, you could model these skills yourself while working through the challenge cards together as a class. I would end my lesson by bringing the group together Again, referring to our learning intention success criteria and showing my students how to correctly store Indy and charge for the next use. Some things to consider with your first lesson with Indy is the group roles and responsibilities. I would also be mindful of coloured carpets and rugs as Indy may sense these whilst on the go. For support and ideas, take a look at the Indy Educator Guidebook included in your kit. I hope your first indie lesson is as engaging as possible and enables all learners to begin their coding journeys. Don't forget to share any of your successes and questions with our STEM.T4L Facebook and Yammer communities.